Hi there. Uh, welcome to PDX Garden Home. Um, I'm just uh, trimming up the fever few here that's uh, in the greenhouse. Um, it is, we're at the end of December here in Portland, Oregon. Um, it continues to be uh, quite cold outside, and um, but it's not snowing or anything. Um, nothing's frozen over. Um, it's probably getting down to the 30s at night, and uh, it's getting in somewhere between the 40s and the 40-ish 40-ish range during the day. And in the greenhouse, it'll stay above 35 at night, and then it'll get uh, to up to the 50s um, uh, during the day. So definitely, um, it's an unheated greenhouse. I have a heater in here that I use just for myself to keep me warm while I'm in here today. Um, and the entire episode, uh, all three segments that we're doing um, on different plants that we're growing in the greenhouse, it's all going to be from the greenhouse. I just am too too tired and lazy to go outside in the cold and in the regular garden right now, although we do still have some stuff out there. I just harvested um, uh, just before Christmas uh, to put into the in, into the mix for the Christmas feast. I harvested um, some bok choy and some um, uh, lettuces and arugula and carrots. Um, so we still do have stuff out there. Um, I think if I if I was better at kind of planning out in the fall and getting things filled out more for the winter garden, we would have had even more. We we could have things like more broccoli and more uh, maybe some cauliflower and maybe. Uh, more cabbages, but I haven't quite figured out how to get that timing right that we can get those kinds of things to harvest in December. Oh yeah, we did harvest some Brussels sprouts as well. So, uh, but my Brussels sprouts continue to be like these little dinky ones. I mean, I may get an occasional one that looks like the kind you have in the supermarket, but for the most part, um, I'm not a, uh, I haven't cracked the Brussels sprout code yet. I'm not a good Brussels sprout gardener. I grew a lot of different, I grew a lot of, a lot of Brussels sprouts. I, or I had probably a, a 15 foot bed of Brussels sprouts this year. And so we did get a lot, even, you know, even though they're a little dinky because we grew so much, we, we definitely got a, a good harvest that we could eat and they tasted good. We, we ate some of those Brussels sprouts with Christmas dinner and it was good. Um, so that's, that's great. But now as we head into new year's, um, I still have some of the carrots and bok choy left over, but we definitely don't have any other kind of real harvest coming out of the garden right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, back to being in the greenhouse, um, yeah, it's, I, it's a privilege, of course, to be here in the greenhouse and be able to garden in, in winter in Portland, Oregon like this when it's rainy and cold outside and dark and I can still do some stuff in here. And so, um, thank you for joining me and, uh, let me, let me show you what's going on. So we'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep on trimming these and I'll let you take a look at the segments that I, I filmed for you here today. All right. Thanks now. Coming up on today's episode, we are going to be looking at a plant that's new to us here at PDX Garden Home, Epimedium, a shade-loving perennial. Then we're going to take a look at a type of columbine, Aquilegia ruby port. Finally, we're going to finish off with a flower that we planted for the summer but has carried on well in the cool greenhouse unexpectedly, Linaria. All right, well, let's get to it. Well, um, one of the plants that we have in the greenhouse that we're, uh, pr we prop we're propagating for the shade garden, the woodland garden here at PDX Garden Home is Epimedium. And this variety of Epimedium is supposed to um, uh, grow to then uh, have a lot of little uh, yellow to reddish flowers and I've never grown it before, so this this is, will be an experiment this year to see. Uh, hopefully it'll flower this coming spring. I don't know if it's too soon or not because it was just being propagated this fall. So we got, somebody else um, created the the divisions and the we, we got the liners from a nursery, I should say. And then we um, potted those up and this is what the plant looks like right now uh, in the greenhouse. Um, one of the things that I couldn't really find about it was how cold hardy it's supposed to be, but given where it's a perennial and given where it's grown, including here in, in the Northwest and Oregon and in Portland, um, it's also grown in colder places in the East Coast and the Atlantic as well. Um, so I think that's all kind of, that all implies that it is cold hardy. Once it goes outside, it should be, it should be fine um, and will stay outside for the, for the whole year once we once we put them in the ground, but we're just kind of babying them here in the greenhouse for 
uh, the winter and then uh, early before early spring perhaps we'll pop we'll put them out I don't know if we'll wait till it flowers and then put them out or if we'll just go ahead and put them out um, as soon as we can as soon as we think it's fairly safe to just go ahead and do that and let them go so this is this is one of the better ones a lot of them um, have gotten really brown and the leaves have fallen off altogether with with a lot of them but I'm hoping that's just natural for the again I haven't done this I haven't done epimedium before so I'm not sure um, but the it says it's good for a ground cover so it should spread out a lot and um, be great in the, the shade garden so and that's that's one of the things that the shade garden as I've probably you've heard me say in previous videos is a big focus of ours um, for 2020 is kind of filling out the woodland garden and trying our hand at some shade plants, uh, something that we just haven't done done before. Um, and so, yeah, so I will keep you updated on our epimedium plants. And uh, we've got a lot of them. I would say we've got maybe 30 of them. Um, so we may be also uh, selling or trading a few of those uh, later when we get into early spring as well. All right. Um, and I will... Uh, that's it for the Epimedium. I will see you all in the next segment. Uh, this plant is called an Aquilegia. I'm maybe saying it wrong. I think it's spelled A-Q-U-E-L-E-G-I-A. -E um, Aquilegia ruby port. And it's actually a type of columbine. And the reason that I, I bought the starts from a nursery, the little the little plugs, and we've potted them up and we've been growing them here in the greenhouse over winter with the plan to plant them out in the spring. And the reason that I did that was because it was part of our overall plan to um, pot up and grow a lot of shade, loving perennials this uh, during the winter in the greenhouse and then kind of really populate out the woodland, the South Woodland Garden here at PDX Garden Home. Uh, this is actually a kind of columbine though and so some of the research I was doing um, while it will tolerate some shade it's not clear to me that it actually is a shade uh, perennial in the sense that it loves shade or that it would necessarily do well in our woodland garden so um, we we've got a lot of them like we do for a lot of our other shade perennials uh, or what we think are shade perennials that we're growing in the greenhouse well we've probably got about 20 to 30 of these and so um, we'll we'll plant some in the woodland garden as we plan, but we'll plant some out in other places and just so that we can make sure that we get the benefit and enjoyment of the plant. Um, we'll, we'll most likely have extras as well that we'll be able to do some trades and maybe sell a few in the spring as well. So that's our plan with it. The uh, the calling it the um, the term ruby on that it refers to the fact that the flower is supposed to be a nice a nice little red flower and it otherwise looks from the pictures that I've seen on the web looks very similar to other columbine. I have grown other columbine um, in terms of in terms of uh, columbine spreading out and growing. Um, I haven't noticed that it spreads out all that much. I'm not sure if it really just stays with the same plant, if it kind of spreads through the roots or through uh, uh, through the base somehow, or if it uh, if it spreads at all, if it's just from uh, seed heads populating around. So maybe if you know that, somebody out there knows that who's watching this and wants to throw a comment in there, that would be that'd be great. Um, I'm sure we'll otherwise figure it out as we kind of work through this process of uh, growing these up and planting them out. Okay, well, I'm going to get back to it over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next segment. Uh, in this segment, I'm going to talk about... Um, a plant that's been a favorite of mine in the greenhouse. Um, it it actually grew pretty well outside of the greenhouse in the garden um, this last season as well, but it's been a surprising winter in the greenhouse. Now it's looking a little bit scraggly here. Um, I need to trim it up and also I wasn't keeping it watered so it got dry even though it's cold and it's cold. It's cold here um, in Portland, Oregon. It, you still have to kind of keep the, the pots moist um, and that's tricky because um, you know, it's not like you have to water every day or even every week to do that at this time of year, but you do have to kind of watch it. Um, but the reason that I like this, and let me trim this up while we're talking. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to be pretty imprecise about it. I'm just going to kind of trim off a whole section here that's not looking as good. Um, the reason that... Um, the reason I like it is because it's it's a bit of a surprise um, that it's because 
the greenhouse is uh, the greenhouse is protecting the plants from frost, but it's not like warm, warm here. It's like um, if it's getting down to 30 degrees outside, it may stay 35 degrees in the greenhouse, um, you know, and it, it may be about five degrees warmer. Um, you know, during the day, it might actually get up to about 50 degrees in here. Um, but that's been enough to kind of keep this plant going and blooming, which is contrary to the seed packets. So uh, the seeds, um, you know, I'm happy to give a shout out to um, uh, Botanical Interest because I get a lot of seeds from them and a lot of flower seeds from them and they do well for me. Um, and so, um, so this is not a complaint at all, but um, what I know about the flowers come mainly from the, the seed packet descriptions and the seed packets say that these are bloomers in uh, late summer and fall. And so uh, that led me to believe, and maybe it has to do with the context of where they're writing from versus our particular area, but late summer to early fall here is like the warmest time in Portland, Oregon. So that led me to believe that this would be kind of a heat loving plant. Um, and I actually, I think it did okay in the heat outside. It was doing fine. So it, it wasn't that it didn't like the heat, but um, as you can see, it actually likes okay the cold, the cool weather too. And it, and it's continued kind of blooming quite a bit there. So, so it's a pleasant surprise. It's not a complaint or anything that it survives in the, in the cool greenhouse in the winter here in Portland, Oregon, but it's uh but it is definitely a surprise, not something I expected. So um, I'm going to make sure this gets enough moisture and trim it up a bit, and then maybe I'll show it to you again um, in a couple weeks, and we'll see kind of if it's still, as we head into January, um, if it's still kind of uh, doing okay, um, continuing to surprise us. Uh, this plant some, uh, is also called, um, I think they called it like the fairy flower, and it's also like a, a mini snapdragon, um, so it has, um, has some different names that it goes by, but... Yeah, I like it. I, I like I like it and I like the, the color and the vibrance it adds to the greenhouse here as we're uh at the end of December in, in the in in the thick of uh winter here now. Okay. Well that's it. I will see you all next time. Hi. Well, thanks for joining me here today at PDX Garden Home. Our episodes, you know, for the next few weeks will be well, maybe for the next month or two will be probably relatively shorter because we're just doing stuff in the greenhouse and there's only so many things that we can even fit into the greenhouse, much less um, actually do in the greenhouse. Um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll maybe have some stuff outside too, maybe some structural things that we can share or maybe just a, just a quick view of what's going on. But that's just a update and, and kind of a disclaimer about uh, where we're going with our videos and our channel over the next couple of months um, getting ready for 2020. Perhaps maybe we should do a video on um, on the seeds that we're getting and and certainly as we get into late January we'll actually start seed starting for the regular spring and summer garden. So um, yeah if there's anything that uh, you think we should cover that you would like to hear from us on um, you know put it down in the comments. We'd love we'd love that feedback and uh, if you're enjoying this as always, please subscribe, uh, hit the notifications button on YouTube so that you can kind of um, see what we're, see when we're updating and posting new videos. And uh, yeah, tell your friends and family about it, of course, so that we can uh, continue to build this, build this channel and build this community. All right. Well, thank you all. And I will see you in uh, the next video. Take care now.